Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Alan Weinstein with another episode of About Real Health, Creating a New Health Culture Worldwide. What we like to say is get serious about real health. Today, um, as always, we talk about real health success stories because we want you to know that real health is possible. And today I have a very, very special guest, Dr. Liz Anderson Peacock, who is a chiropractor. I'm going to give a little introduction to her and then I'm going to bring myself back on the screen and um, bring Liz on the screen. Um, first of all, Dr. Liz Anderson Peacock is an energetic and internationally recognized expert, uh, both in the chiropractic profession and in the health and wellness field. Currently, Dr. Liz is engaging audiences around the world, speaking and bringing a revitalized approach to the workplace and teams facilitating corporate groups, working on team building, motivation, mat matching values with vision, focusing on wellness and evoking positive results through encouraging an approach which embraces self-leadership over management. Dr. Liz also coaches professionals and executives and delivers her self-improvement program, Best Version of You, through powerful workshops and retreats geared to enriching your personal and professional life. Her book, Pearls of Wisdom, Pure and Powerful, was written during her personal and remarkable journey through natural cancer treatments and the experience of living with a synovial sarcoma. Uh, so, um, Dr. Liz, I want to welcome you to our show today, um, and you're on. Thank you so much. It's an absolute delight. Thank you. Well, it's really our pleasure to have you here, and we've been looking forward to it, and we're real excited. So what I'm going to do is we're going to jump right into it, and I guess my first question is, can you define health for our audience? Well, I think one of the best things to look at is when we look at health is that Health is the ability of the body to perceive the world, make the most appropriate response in a timely manner so that you can then adapt to the situation at hand. And really what that means is that we can live our life in a way that is, I'm going to say, in, in accordance to not just our genetics, but have this ability to thrive and uh, recreate ourselves in a way in a healthy environment and uh, we can do that throughout our entire life. So the thing that's required for health is really, I like to say, looking at the hierarchy of what we have in our lives and the master controlling system of the body that allows us to perceive the world, meaning we can tell if it's hot out or cold out or whether we're hungry or if we have to go to the bathroom or if we're tired or if we're excited or if we're hearing something or if we're feeling something. All of that is integrated through your nervous system and it's incorporated through this through our senses which we have senses of taste touch smell uh, pain all these kinds of senses so we have to perceive our world so that the body can then understand and make the right decision on what to do while we're in that world so an example would be if it's cold outside we sense that it's cold through our skin and we have shunting of blood we have a response to that that allows us to hopefully adapt to that cold, i.e. put on a coat, get inside. We make a response that allows us to be able to survive. And so we need to perceive that world appropriately and then we need to create a proper response, which is also related to the nervous system. So if there's confusion at some point in time with the ability to perceive, how that information is integrated, what it means, how it's interpreted, and then or how it responds, we can end up with a problem. And as I see it as a chiropractor, most people think we work with the spine, and that's true, but more importantly, we use the spine as our conduit in to look at how the nervous system is functioning. And really, in my world, true chiropractic is about improving human potential. So it doesn't matter what you come in with, if there is any stress on the spine creating stress in the nervous system, that can impact perception, response, integration, and we can remove that, then that can change the potential of the individual. Now where this comes into health is the choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis has, have everything to do with what we've learned, what we understand, and also what we want. And in my experience, when people start to really get into understanding what their body's asking them to do, 
they start to make better choices. And to me, that's what all about real health is about, is making better choices. And that improves your potential. And it improves your ability to get out there and do what you love to do. It improves your ability to be a better parent or a better daughter or son or a better friend or a better worker or be able to be more creative in the way that you do things. One of the things that we see is that when we're under stress, we work from what we call our lower brain. It's called the limbic system. But when we're under stress, what happens is that we're really working on, our, on an instinctual level. Get me through the day. It's the immediacy of the response. We don't look necessarily at the long-term outcome. It's get me out of this situation. The problem with that is that we're not really resourceful or creative when we're in that part of our brain. And when we start to quiet that active mind and get strategies to reduce our stress levels, that allows us to get into the frontal lobe and the prefrontal cortex, which I know are technical words. The idea behind these areas, though, is that these allow us to plan. They allow us to dream. They allow us to see things that are there that we just couldn't see when we were under stress. So in other words, it gives this area allows us to become more creative it allows us to be more resourceful and when we can have a life with greater creativity and resourcefulness we then make better choices all through all through the different areas I wanted to um, add a couple of things to what you said that which what you said was great um, I, I don't know if most people know that I, I too am a chiropractor for 30 years but um, you said something that um, you know if it's cold outside we then can perceive that world and put on our coat which is very very true at the same time there's a whole other part of the nervous system th that is um, the automatic nervous system or autonomic where your body will also then start to shiver to protect you and it's all aspects of the nervous system that chiropractors really deal in and I know it's it, everyone sees us as oh I go to a chiropractor for back pain or headaches or neck pain but it's such a small part of what we do even though we do it greatly it most people don't recognize what you're talking about which is really the master control of the system the system that controls sleeping as you said going to the bathroom your heart rate your blood pressure everything that literally keeps you alive that you don't even have to think about um, so um, really terrific that you brought that up um, so let's talk about the journey um, you know I know that you brought some slides Do you want to turn those on for us and, and let's get into those absolutely I'll let you know if we're uh, beautiful, perfect. We see them, they look great. Great, fabulous. Alrighty, so, so really what's important at this point in time is deciding what you want. And it's not just about creating a, a roadmap. It's a matter of creating the right roadmap. And I remember uh, Stephen Covey once said that we want to be mindful when we're climbing the ladder of success because what we don't want to find is that we're climbing that ladder, we get to the top rung, and then as soon as we get to that top rung, we find out it's against the wrong wall. <laughs> and so the point we want to make here is how do you know what it is you really, really want in creating the right roadmap? And so that's what we're going to spend a little bit of time on. And the first thing to do is really identify where you are right now. It does not matter where you are right now. This is your starting point. And as long as you are alive and as long as you have some level of function, you can make changes. And we are not destined to be at the effect of our genes. We, we know that the, the gene theory is, uh, is important, but it's incomplete. And what we do know is the impact of the environment on turning a gene on or off is absolutely massive and will not I will not understate how important that is so understanding where you are right now the first thing I want listeners to do as long as you're not driving a car is do what I call a check-in and the check-in is if you were able to close your eyes safely tune in to a sensation or a feeling in your body just take a moment it may be you're mad glad sad tired need to go to the bathroom, whatever it might be. There's a feeling or a sensation or an emotion in you right now that you identify. And once you have got that identified, what I want you to do now is write it down. Write down a word that would represent where you are right now. 
And then what I want you to do is check in again. And I want you to, again, close your eyes. And I want you to think about what is it, where is it that you want to be? What is it that you want to feel in your life? And more so than expressing it from a, um, from a negative, I, for example, what I would prefer not to see is I want no pain because what the universe still effectively hears is the pain. I would like you to think of it in a positive way. What is it that you would prefer to feel? Connected, happiness, joy, love, peace, whatever it may be. Identify where you want to be, what you want to feel. And if the where you are now and where you want to be aren't exactly the same two words, because I want you to write down where you want to be, what it is you want to feel, if those are not the same two words, that is going to be your goal, is for you to sit very, very quietly turn off that active mind and ask yourself, what do I need to get there? What do I need to start to do to move me from where I am to where I want to be? Because this is going to create your roadmap to be able to do that. Dr. Liz, uh, I don't want to break the trend here, but um, do you find that for most people that are listening, when they go through that exercise, they really know what they need to do? They may not be doing it, but basically they know where they're at, they know where they want to be, and they know how to get there, but the disconnect is that they don't do what's necessary to get there? Exactly. Absolutely. You know, we do know what we need to do. And one of the challenges is, is that we usually create the end result as being such a massive leap that we don't even want to start it because it's just too much to do. It's just too big. So for example, if I came in today to the call and say, I'm exhausted, I'm so tired, and my end goal is to have restorative sleep where I wake up automatically fully ready to go for my day, and the thought of that is absolutely overwhelming, I'm not going to do anything. But if I can chunk it down into something that is one very small baby step that I know I can do right now, then that's what I want people to start to work on. And the baby step may be, I will promise to myself, five days a week, I will go to bed 15 minutes earlier than I currently am. So if I'm going to bed at 11 p.m., I'm going to go to bed at 10.45. So you want to make it such a small step, and I'm going to get into that in a minute as well, but thank you for the asking that question, because what we want to be doing is really focusing on the what and the how now. We don't want to wait till it's the right time, because there's never a right time. The only right time is actually right now, because this is the only time we know we absolutely have. And the key with some people, too, is that most people, not most, many people will want to get themselves back to where they were. So they've had health, then they've lost their health, and they'll often say, oh, good doc, get me back to where I was. And I like to often say, well, what if where you were wasn't that good in the first place because it puts you back to where you are? And so rather than thinking about what we, you know, just the lack of symptoms or the lack of a problem, why are we not thinking about what is the ideal situation? What is that uber health? What is it that really super healthy people do? What is, it that, um, what is it that I can do and get started on this journey? So rather than feeling lost and very lost, what I'd want you to consider, and these are great elements for people to write down, is to pick what elements are going to be right for them. But there's a number of environments we have that we can consider when we're looking at health. And I'm going to call this the wheel of health. So what we may have as important is time for us to experience ourselves where we can turn off that active mind, sit in silence and tune in to what the body's actually telling us. It is unbelievable how many patients we see, and I know Alan you'll have seen this too, is the number of people that actually become, I'm going to say dumb, dumbed down from the neck down where they've turned off the sensations of their body until it gets to be that red light that they cannot ignore anymore. Yep. And in my experience, this stuff percolates and percolates and percolates until it becomes an event. And so that's one element. Another one may be, what is it that you're actually watching on television? What are you watching or listening to in music? What are you watching on the internet? What are you saying on social media? What are you reading on social media? So an example of that would be, 
you know, are you watching CSI before you go to bed on death and mayhem and then you try to have a nice restorative sleep after you've just stimulated your brain with gosh only knows what? Maybe there's something different that you might want to choose to do. Another element to consider is your fuel, which is your food. So food is information. Food does become us. You, we could be spending hours on just this alone. But what choices can you start to make differently that healthy people make with respect to their food? What is it that healthy people eat? How much do they eat? When do they eat? How much are they drinking from water standpoint? What kind of quality of water source are they using? What is it that uh, uber healthy people weigh? How is it that they weigh that? Is it maybe portion size, it's exercise, it's understanding their own metabolism, it depends on their age perhaps as well. What type of restorative time do you have? So if you've been under stress, how do you restore from that? If you've been working out, how do you restore from those workouts? What is the time you need to give yourself for downtime? Sleep, we briefly talked about that. What do uber healthy people sl sleep like? What kind of environment are they in? Do they have an LED light shining on their face? Do they have um, you know, bright lights in their room? Are they watching TV when, they, when, they're, when their partner is asleep? You know, what is it in that scenario that a healthy person truly does? Another example would be stress. How are people managing their stress? How are people managing their time and connecting perhaps with Mother Nature? getting back to our roots, getting fresh air, breathing properly. How much are people in healthy relationships? What, does, what do those relationships look like? And it could be with intimacy with a partner, could be with your family, it could be with friends. What other environment are healthy people doing with respect to meditation or visualization? Or it could be <clears throat> more spirituality for them, it could be a, a, an organized religion. What, is a, what does a healthy person do with respect to their own fitness, their strength, their flexibility, and their stamina? So there's a lot of different areas here that you can write down. And what I want you to do is pick eight. And you're going to create this sort of a wheel where you have the vertical line, a horizontal line, and an X from the middle that puts you into eight pieces of a pie. And then you're going to put a word on the outside, on one of these areas out through here, that will represent something that's important to you. So let's say this says stress. Let's say this, say this says television, let's say this says food, let's say this says hydration, let's say this says sleep, this might be time to experience myself, this may be uh, being out in nature, this might be relationships, whatever it might be. And what I want you to do is you're going to rank yourself from an ideal. So let's say this is stress, and let's say what we want is calm. What I want you to consider is putting down, I don't know, three or three to ten bullets on the outside of what is it a person that's unstressed, looks, tastes, feels, acts like. So you're building, if you will, the ideal scenario of what you want to move towards. Then, once you have that ideal of what you want to move towards with all your bullets on the outside, rank yourself relative to those bullets from zero to ten. Zero means that you're not doing any of them. 10 out of 10 would be you're doing all of them and more, where you're mastering this. And so somewhere along the line here, you're going to come up with a number. And you're going to uh, put the number on the outside by whatever other numbers you may have, so out here somewhere. And then what I want you to do is fill in this inner area to the same surface area. So I'm going to move to another slide to show you what this looks like. So this inner area here is about a 6 out of 10, maybe a 5 out of 10. And then I'm going to shade that in. And then I'm going to go on to the next one. Next one, how much do, what kinds of TV or music do I watch? What would a really healthy person be watching? Or would they be watching? Maybe they're doing something else. Maybe they're reading inspiring books. Whatever. Maybe they're watching more of a documentary type of scenario. How much time would they be doing? So build out what you think the healthiest person would be doing. Then rank yourself according to that. So this one be, would be, this surface area in through here would be like about an 8 out of 10. Then if we looked at our food and our nutrition, you get my idea. You look at what would a healthy person be doing, what are those five to ten bullets out here relative, uh, out here, and then measure yourself relative to that. So in this case, this might be a three. Let's look at hydration. Are you getting uh, the right amount of fluid into you and the right sources on a daily basis, and what would those, what would those healthy people be doing there? 
and then from here rank yourself so this would be about a 9 out of 10 so you're gonna go through each area of the circle and from there what I want you to do is if this is your wheel of life and on the outer circumference and this is your new circumference here that we're gonna make on this other side and as you'll have these other areas for four areas filled out what does your ride look like <laughs> and the reason why I ask that is that it becomes very visual for people to say this is where I need to work on this is what I need to work on now Alan you asked earlier about why aren't people doing this the problem is is that say for example food where we are to where we want to be is this big gap and it's way too big and so what happens is is we don't do anything so there's a couple of ways you can look at this wheel that are helpful one is pick an area of the wheel that really calls to you the most and it could be the easiest thing for you to work on or you could be daring and say I'm gonna go with the hardest thing for this for for me to work on or it could be the area of the wheel that if you have if you improve that area it will improve a number of areas of your life so let's say for an example we talked earlier about sleep if we get more sleep what will happen is it will tend to want to work out we're gonna have better relationships because we're not going to be as exhausted and snippy with people we're going to be more creative we're going to probably make better food choices as well because we're we don't have to go for those comfort foods or we don't have to go for the the jolt of the caffeine to get you through the day so sleep might be a very big one for someone to work on that has an impact on everything else but what's really important is for you to work on what's important to you so the key as I mentioned is to go from the baby step so if I'm looking at say this area I've got filled out here as a three for food what I want to do is think about what is it that I can do that's going to move me from a three to a four not to a ten but to a four and out of my bulleted list of the ideal that's out the side here what's one thing in there that I can do that I know I can start within 24 hours so it may be something as simple as when I go to grocery shop I'm only going to stay on the outside of the shopping um, of, the, of the store because that's where we have the fresh fruits it's uh, the vegetables it's where we have the um, the the meats whereas all the junk food tends to be within the aisle so that might be a simple start that you're going to do it may be that you're going to go to your cupboard and get rid of the junk food and I don't know about you but if I buy junk food eh, there's a good likelihood at some point in time I will probably be the one that's eating it so it, it's whatever is going to be important for you so the key with it is what do healthy people think say do how do they act in all realms of their life and think of it more in not to where you are well even though you're identifying where you are right now I want you to focus on where you could be and the where you could be when you get there how is that going to make you feel and how is that going to have an impact on how you feel how you interact with other people the feelings you want to have the ability for you to live the life of your dreams the ability for you to interact and have uh, different relationships with other people as well so it's a really big key this uh, particular uh, this particular slide and I'm not sure why my slides not turning but I'm not gonna worry about it if it's not gonna turn it's not gonna turn sometimes if it doesn't turn um, and I'm gonna ask something while you're oh you got it fantastic yep, got it yeah did you want to add something I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till the end because I'm okay. you're on the roll. And I don't want to interrupt. Okay. So one of the keys I want to think about here is really inspired action because when we can come from a place of inspiration where something is almost coming through us, man, do we feel connected. So I have a four little things below this, and that there's a number of different actions we can take. Reflexive action. That's when you ha you step on a tack and you are automatically removing that foot before it even registers what you've actually st stood on, or you burn your hand. Um, it, we all know those feelings of reflex. It's where we the body's actually changing what it's doing before we're even aware of it. And then there's another level of action that happens. It's called instinct, or if you want animal instinct or gut instinct, that's sort of where we're working in survival we may be also looking at where we're being threatened and so our actions are are dictated by protecting ourselves or overcoming an adversity that's that's happening to us and again we don't make the best decisions usually in those scenarios it could be protection of young could be another instinct now another area is intuition 
And intuition is where we're in that place of where we use our heart and mind blended together. And intuition is that place where, if you will, it's a sixth sense. We really may not have any evidence for what's going on, but we know that when we listen to our intuition, it always points us in the right direction. And when we don't listen to intuition, it does the opposite. And uh, in my life, whenever I don't listen to my intuition, there's always a uh, whoops, should have done that. The last one is inspiration. And inspiration is where we really are in spirit. It is where almost we've turned off our active mind. We may pose a question that we don't have an answer to. And before we know it, boom, it comes to us. The answer comes to us. So an example I can give you for the three of these is my dad. My dad, uh, British, but he's lived all over the world. And his highest values were uh, integrity, self-autonomy, and freedom. He was born in 1920 in Brazil, raised in Africa and England, went to Cambridge, became an engineer, fought in World War II all over the place. And when he was in his 80s, it was vested with me to remove his driver's license. And what a driver's license represents, especially to that age group, is freedom and self-autonomy. And I remember going to my dad thinking, oh my God, I know darn well if I have this conversation of, dad, I need to take your driver's license, you're not safe, I am going to get a reflexive, instinctual response from my dad. It'll be, no, you're not. And so I didn't go to him with that question. And then I thought I could appeal to him as an engineer through intuition. I could talk to him about how unsafe he was to drive, what was going on with his body, what, was, what he wasn't able to do, and I knew I could guilt him into giving me that license. But that didn't sit well with me. And so what I did is I really quieted my mind, because I didn't have the answer of what I wanted yet. Quieted my mind and I posed a question. And I basically said, what am I not seeing yet? And before I knew it, in popped an answer for me. And it was, don't take his license, give him another option. So I went to my mother and my brother and I said, what if we do all the driving for dad? Because then we can help him out, we're with him, it's safe for all of the reasons. They agreed. So I went to my dad with that proposal. Let us drive you, let us be with you. It's a great excuse to spend time. He was all for it. A couple weeks later, I'm out in the country and my dad is uh, sitting beside me and, and in the car and I asked him if he wanted to drive. And he looks at me and he goes, hell no, I don't want to drive. I'm not safe to drive. <laughs> That's great. And, you know, it was such an interesting lesson for me because he, when he died, eventually, he died with a valid driver's license. And I know that because he had that license, he always felt that if there was an emergency, he could drive because it was legal for him to drive because he had the license. And how often can we start solving problems for ourselves if we can move from our own point of inspiration. And so it's about checking in with our inner GPS. And I've given you a tool when we started with this today is check in with where you are with a sensation or a feeling. Because that sensation or the feeling will give us the awareness of what we were previously thinking about. And then what we want to do is change our thought to decide what is it we would prefer to feel, which will then create the thoughts that go with that preferred feeling that is going to start to show us what direction we need to go in. And so really what I've been talking about here is what we're looking at creating is an energy rich state or an empowering state for ourselves. What this is all about is getting into our creativity and our resourcefulness of our forebrain and we collapse things that are incongruent for us. I don't know about you, but I know that there's been times in my life, and I certainly see it with many people, where it's like they have one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake, and they're not going anywhere. And these are related to the 95% of habits that we have that are usually unconscious, they're sitting in here, and they stop us from leading and doing the things that we need to be doing. But how we become aware of this whole area is by tuning in and feeling and listening to what the body is doing and what our mind has been doing. And we want to access that through doing things like meditation, going for a walk in nature, sitting still, could be yoga, could be breath work, could be all sorts of different types of things. It's finding out what works for you is really what it comes down to. And the, the, the idea that we have here is that we will have obstacles that come up. And the key, and you've heard me say it twice before, is 
rather than getting focused on the obstacle, I like to now say, what can I do about this obstacle? What am I learning about myself? And what is my way around it? So what am I not currently seeing yet? And when I get quiet and I ask that, I always find a solution will come up for me. And a solution may not come up directly. It may be that there's a person, place, or thing that shows up in my life that gives me direction. It may be that what pops into my mind is I'm thinking of someone, I need to give them a call, and as I'm dialing the phone, they call me. So the key with this is to really identify what problems need solving, or if you will, what opportunities need solving, what is important for you to dedicate your resources to, and your resources are your time, your energy, your money or your finances, um, and your talents. All of those are your resources that you have. And when we can be very clear on the problems that need solving and we get clear with how to dedicate our own resources, our energy and talents to it, the how will always show up. As I said, it'll show up as a person, place or thing, it'll show up as an idea, it'll show up as some resource that we couldn't see before that now we can. And so the key then with this is what is your next? What is it that you want to be creating next? How are you going to get there? Use that wheel. It is an, a tremendous tool that I've seen help be so helpful for all sorts of people. And so I'm going to I'm going to pull it over to you again. <laughs> okay, well that's terrific and that was really um great. I love that wheel. A, a couple of things I want to say and and get your input on this also. Um and one of the things is is that I think a great point that you made and one that I think everyone re really needs to hear so I want to emphasize it is you can't go from point A to point B in one jumbo step so if your diet needs improving you're not going to go from a poor diet that needs improving to being a raw food vegan if that's ultimately the direction that you believe that you should go in you have to make baby steps because if you don't and you don't recognize that the path from point A to point B it goes very much up and down, up and down. You are going to hit a wall, and when you hit that wall, you're going to fail. So if you need to say, I want to be in better shape, and let's say you're 100 pounds overweight, and your goal is to lose 100 pounds, and you believe you're this point A to point B is losing 100 pounds, well, when you get to 20 pounds, you're going to feel like, oh my God, I still have 80 pounds left to go. I'll never be able to do this, and ultimately you're going to fail. So you must chunk it, in very, as Dr. Liz said, in very, very small pieces. I think that's very important. The second thing I wanted to bring up is, is Dr. Liz started by talking about that the ability for us to perceive where we are in our environment is based on your nervous system. And one of the things I've learned over the years is if you're having trouble perceiving where you are, that first step that Dr. Liz was talking about is where are you now, where would you like to be? Um, if you even are having trouble understanding where you're at and you don't feel connected to your body or the perception of your environment, that's a real good indication that your nervous system really needs to be checked because the ability to be able to have that perception is truly based on your nervous system. So I would say if you can't even get started, that's a good indication of your first roadblock and that is that you have a nervous system that's functioning at so low a level then you need to see your chiropractor. If you don't have one, you need to get one. If your chiropractor invited you to the show, make sure that you um, get in there if you haven't been there in a while because that will change how you see your environment. So so um, two questions I have for you, Liz, and then I'm going to jump back in. Let you, then I'll jump back in and close out the show. Number one is are there any other roadblocks that you've come into, you know, know by doing this with thousands of people that they have to get past other than the one I said. And the second question is, um, other than I'm going to direct them to learn more about you, is there one big next step that you would say, this is your call to action, this is the, what you need to do next. So start with any other roadblocks. And if you don't know any, that's great. And give me one giant step if they, they could do first. Okay. Well, certainly the roadblocks can be very many. And it's a matter of the environment that we put ourselves into. 
So quite often, for example, one of the things that I saw, I have an obese child in my practice and the mother understands he needs to drop weight. The problem is, is that both parents are obese. So what is the likelihood that this poor kid is going to be able to change his environment when both parents are obese and are unable or unwilling right now to change their lives? So the environment we put ourselves in. So sometimes what will happen is we want to be from point A to point B, but the people around us are actually creating roadblocks and we may need to actually change who we dialogue with. And this is an interesting thing because in my experience, the patients that go to chiropractors think differently. They understand health from the inside out. They think differently. And it's to plug yourself in with people like that. Plugging yourself within, within people in the yoga community. Plugging yourself in with people that are doing tremendous works of charity. There's a, there's a different mindset that comes up with these kinds of people. So that's one. The other one is is um, not putting ourselves into, so that's with people, but what other kinds of environments? So for example, for me, one of my weaknesses is, and I do not watch a lot of television, but on occasion when I do, my wish to have something in my hands to eat is really, really high. So I've learned, right, don't right. Eat, I don't <laughs> snack. It's why would I put myself in that environment? So it's, it's sometimes these simple little things that can make all the difference, for sure. That's the, that's the one. And now I forgot what your other question was. My last question was the first next step from – one of them is going to be visit your website, which I'm going to give them that link in a minute. But any other first step, and when this call ends, what you should do next to get this program started? Okay. When this call ends, you go to that circle. You star one of those, uh, one of those pieces of the pie. I want you, without thinking, I want you to tune in and just write down what do you already know you can do in that to, to solve that problem that you have? Write it down without thinking because you, you instinctively will know exactly what to do. From there, what you'd want to do is now chunk it down to make it real. So if it's something that's really too big, you need to pare it down so it becomes a very small step. But do it now. Don't wait 24 hours. Do it within 15 minutes. And that's going to make you feel good about yourself. That's going to put you into a positive energy reserve because you did it. You're going to become more creative. The more you do this, you become more creative, more resourceful, and you start moving yourself along. Ask people to hold you accountable to do what you want to do as well so that we don't lose space. That's another big key for an environment too. Oh, absolutely. The accountability piece is huge. Um, now, the step I want to tell you to do is when you have, to, after the show's over, you have a few minutes, I want you to go to aboutrealhealth.com forward slash Liz, L I Z, and there you'll get to learn more about Dr. Liz, the kind of things that she does. Um, I didn't even really touch the surface of what she's all about and the things that she's involved in. So make sure that um, you go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to close out the show first. I want to thank you, Dr. Liz, for taking time out of your busy schedule and coming on our show. You are absolutely terrific. Dr. Allen, thank you so much. I, it requires so much passion to be able to do what you do because you're the you and Dr. Natalie are the brains behind this. You are the technical wizard. I really appreciate and respect what you bring not just to people but to also doctors too. So thank you for what you do too. Well thank you so much for saying that. Um, on behalf of myself, Dr. Alan Weinstein and uh, Dr. Liz um, Anderson Peacock um, I, and aboutrealhealth.com, we want to thank you for to, coming by our show today. Remember, these are all real health success stories. And of course, real health is possible. And what we want you to do is get serious about real health. We'll see you next month. Have a great day, everybody.